Well, good early afternoon, everybody. It's 12.02 here in Ohio and, you know, nine o'clock on the West Coast. So good morning to all of you guys to the west of me and good evening to anybody in the way, way east of me. My name is Ron Wheeler and I want to welcome you all to the five keys to generate income with options. Before we get officially started, and I guess I can make my uh, camera a little bit bigger for you guys. Um, I made my background black, so it's like I'm doing the, uh, what do you call it? The uh, Bohemian Rhapsody thing like Queen. <laughs> so I uh, made my background so you guys can't uh, see the background here, but that's okay. Um, first off, if everybody can hear me, if you guys can see my screen, uh, see me on the screen, do me a favor in your chat, just type in why, yes, just something that way I know that we're broadcasting okay and everything is working well. Um, all right, perfect. John, you were the first. And uh, the cool thing is I can say, uh, I can kind of click on you. John, welcome to you as well. So that's good. I'm glad to hear that you can hear me. And uh, please, by all means, more folks uh, chime in with me. Let me know that you can see my, uh, my mug here, my face for radio. And if you can hear my voice, just do me a favor, type in Y, type in yes. That way I know that everything is working effectively. Brad, welcome to you as well. It's good to have you with us. And of course, to everyone else that is joining us, I uh, can kind of see as people are coming in. So I won't get started with the presentation for another few minutes or so. That way, everybody can uh, find the room, so to speak, and find everything else that you need to get us uh, started. So bear with me as we uh, just kind of welcome. I'll give you kind of a, as you again, and as you check in, do me a favor, click into the uh, chat, say welcome. Yes. Hey, Ron, I hear you. That kind of stuff. Uh, let me know that uh, you can hear me. And I see more and more folks commenting. Thank you. Um, I'll give you a little bit of background on myself. I've been trading now for, what is it, 25 years? I started back in 97. Actually, I started in June of 97. So it's like 25 years in a month. And I have always been, you know, a trader for the most part. I started my career in IT. And then through IT, I got into a company that designed trading algorithms and software back in the, in the late 90s. And... I've been a trader ever since. I loved it. I got into it. I started trading futures. I was a day trader for a while, did very well at that. Um, after spending you know, 12 years in front of my screens for eight hours a day, looking at intraday charts of things like crude oil and futures and all that kind of stuff, I kind of thought there had to be a better way out there. And one of my mentors uh, was into options trading, got it more involved in options trading, introduced me to options trading. And like I said, that was probably about 12, 13 years ago now when he introduced me to options trading. And I thought that options was going to be a more subtle, easier approach to trading. And over the course of time, that has proven to be true. So what I'm going to show you today is some of the real concepts that I personally use as an options trader and how I trade options now. I day trade maybe 1% of the time at this point. I don't even think I day traded at all last year. I think I was just, I'm pretty much 95 to 99% options trading at this point. And I don't day trade anymore. I trade over time. I trade where my positions are normally seven to 10 days long. So I'm, I'm, I like to say active, but I'm not like a day trader. I don't sit in front of my screens anymore. And that's the beauty of it. So welcome to everybody. Like I said, we'll go ahead and get started with the presentation. I just wanted to uh, give some chit chat while people were chiming in and things like that. So Roger and Helen and all the rest of you guys, I do appreciate it. Let's do this. Let's go and start the presentation. So bear with me a second. And I really do want this to be a kind of interactive, if you will. So please ask questions along the way. Um, I'll do my best to answer them as we can go. And I, here's another thing I'm really excited about. Everybody always asks me, hey, Ron, can you make your pointer larger? I totally made my pointer larger. <laughs> so finally, I have a huge pointer on my screen so I can point to things. I know it's the simple things in life sometimes that excite us. All right. Well, you've already seen my face. Here it is. My name again is Ron Wheeler. I am the options income instructor. My official title is the manager of options trading here at VectorVest. And my job is to help investors and retirees generate consistent monthly income. And the way that I do it is with options. And the reason I call this income is because we design trades that are 70% baseline successful, okay? Now you're not always gonna be 70%, you might be 65, might be 60, might be 80, okay? 
but using statistics, we look at trades that have a baseline statistical rate of 70% or better. We've generated that over the last eight years that I've been here at VectorVest. Now, I primarily focus on selling stock and index options, but we do it safer and we do it with low risk, low monetary risk and a lower risk of losing. And But that gives me a high probability of winning. Now, I'm also a coach and mentor in VectorVest group coaching program called the Ultimate Retirement Solution. So I do this live with my students uh, three times a week with index trading and stock trading. Now, we're going to dive into the five point system to generate income using options. So along the way, I'm going to show you many of the mistakes that option traders make. I'm going to show you how to avoid making them. Now, I'm sure some parts of the system will surprise you because they go against what most investors have been taught their whole career. Now, the cool thing about this system is, listen, you can average over 70% winning trades, over 80% with our index system, okay? This is gonna allow you to help generate that steady additional income. So again, let's jump right into this. Now, again, I chose this topic today because I know so many of our clients really want that extra income and they heard that options can do it and they really can. Again, the reason why I call this income is because it's like when you work a job, right? At the end of the week or here on Wednesdays, we get paid. It's income. I know it's coming. There is a 100% chance that I will get a paycheck from VectorVest. That's income to me. Why do I call this income trading and not options trading? Because we're focusing and trading on things that are greater than 50% probability. If you buy a stock, it can go up, you make money. If it goes down, you lose. We're going to focus on trades where if you think a stock will go up, we're going to place a trade on it so you can win even if the stock moves against you. Or lately, if you think a stock will go down, we're going to place a trade on it where you'll make money if the stock goes down, but you'll also be able to make money if the stock goes sideways or even up against you. And that's why I call this income trading because we're giving the trades room to be wrong. We can profit even if we are wrong. And you can't do that by being a buyer, okay? Now, I want you to stick to the end for your chance to win a $1,000 option income course. So everybody is in here that uh, when we get to the end, I'll show you how to do it. And we will raffle off a ticket to an upcoming option income course. All right, so let me ask you guys a question. What one word describes how you feel about options. How do you feel about options? When you hear the words option trading, income trading, buying options, selling options, what are some of the words that describe how that makes you feel? I'm just kind of curious. All right, there we go. I was just looking at my screen. Now, primarily what I see is options can be scary. In fact, my first experiences were a disaster. And this is why I was never really a fan of trading options. Now, I see some of you are more optimistic, right? Fun, opportunity, excited. Wendell, you said risky. That's kind of the same thing as scary. Uh, Patrick, you were saying opportunity and risky, excited, opportunity, fun. Yeah, I mean, they could be all those things. I looked at options originally as scary because I'm going to tell you a story. So when I first started instructing people, now when I was hired in 97 to work for this company that created software and algorithms, I was not hired to teach trading or do trading. My job was IT. I handled their Windows NT networking. I handled some of their backbone systems. I got in. I got into trading over the course of years. I didn't really start teaching people how to trade until I actually made money as a trader and the guy that owned the company trusted me. Well, during one of my classes, I, I did day trading classes, teaching people how to trade the S&P futures. So during one of the classes, we always had lunch with the people and I was sitting at a table and I had a gentleman say, you know, he was talking to me about trading. I'm like, well, how you been doing trading this year? He's like, well, unfortunately, I've lost about $50,000 this year. I'm like, whoa, we got to talk about this. You've been a customer of ours for a very long time. And if you're not making money, it's a problem. He's like, no, 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 Ron, you don't understand. He's like, I'm an options trader. And 
I was buying options and doing these spreads, these debit spreads, and I was using your analysis. The analysis that I was doing was generally properly done and it was correct. But even though that my analysis that you were teaching me is correct, I was losing money on my options trades. If I had just bought the stocks, I would have made money. But because I was trading options, I lost. That scared me. That made me nervous. Okay, okay, mental note, don't trade options because options are terrible, right? But he was taught options incorrectly. He didn't know how to properly use them. There's no reason ever, if you get market direction right, that your options trade should lose money. Never have that happen, never. So he was actually coming to our, our day trading course to kind of refocus and start trading futures again to where he thought he could best make money. So that's one of the reasons why I thought options were scary. I kind of stayed away from them during my early career. Well, I had a kind of a, uh, I guess you could say, I had kind of a uh, enlightening when I had one of our other clients a couple of years later show me how hedge funds trade options and how profitable they actually were. So options can be scary if you don't know what you're doing. In fact, they can be dangerous. They can be very risky. Once you know what you're doing and it's not that hard, that's the beauty of this. Options can be fun, they can be profitable, they can be successful, they can be the primary way to creating income. And being an instructor for so long, I have never had as much success teaching and showing people how to make money as I have when I switch to options. It's a much lower learning curve, okay? All right, now I wanna talk about five keys to generating income using options. All right, so let's talk about this. Now, the first thing that you need to do is you need to be an option seller and not a buyer, okay? Why do you need to be a seller and not a buyer? When you buy an option, typically speaking, your, your trade will not win unless the direction of whatever you're trading goes in your favor. In fact, it has to go even more in your favor. If you buy a call on a $50 stock for a dollar, you're not really going to make money until that stock goes to $51. As an option buyer, you have to overcome the premium. As an option seller, you don't. So for those of you that maybe have never traded options before, let's talk a little bit more about what is an option. So there are three main parts of options that I want to talk to you about right now. There's the expiration date. There is the strike price. And then there's something called the premium. Now, as an option buyer, the expiration date works against you. Okay. Why does the expiration date of an option work against you? Well, when you buy an option, right? If I buy a call, I'm expecting the stock to go up. If I buy a put, I'm expecting a stock to go down. The problem is options have an expiration date. That means that your right to buy or sell ends at a certain date. If the stock doesn't move enough by the time your option expires, you will lose money. So that expiration works against you. Now, we talked about working and needing to overcome prices, right? So when you have a stock, let's say it's a $50 stock. When you trade options, you're going to choose what's called a strike price. This is the price at which your rights as an option buyer become active. So... Just kind of very simply put, if you buy a call for $50, a $50 strike price call on a $50 stock, you have the right, if you want to, not the obligation, to buy that stock for 50 bucks. If you buy a $55 call on a $50 stock, you have the right to buy that stock at $55 a share. If you bought a $45 strike on a $50 stock, you have the right to buy the stock at 45. Now, if you buy options that are what we call out of the money. So when you think, when you think of things like out of the money, don't get confused, it's actually pretty easy. Out of the money simply means this. If you took the stock like you have the right to, it would actually be over the price of the stock. So if I have a $45 strike and the stock is trading at 50, that's in the money. If I have a $55 strike on my call and the stock's trading at 50, I would be out of the money. So by using those option strikes that are out of the money, 
you need to overcome the strike. That means if the stock is 50, you buy a $55 option because it's inexpensive, this option's really not going to make a lot of money until the stock goes over $55 a share. Now, why would you ever want to do something like that? If I'm just telling you that you have to overcome the strike price, well, Ron, why don't you just buy a $40 option on a $50 stock? Here's the last part, because of the premium. You're going to pay a very expensive premium when you buy options that are what's called in the money, okay? So if I buy a $45 strike price on a $50 stock, guess what? It's going to be at a very expensive option premium. It might be a three or four dollar option. Now that might sound good, but you also have to overcome the premium. So even if you bought a forty-five dollar option on a fifty-dollar stock, let's say you paid a three-dollar premium or three hundred dollars for that option, you're not really going to make a lot of money on that thing unless you overcome the price of that premium. So you have a let's say forty-five dollar option, fifty-dollar stock. You bought it for three bucks. Until that stock moves up $3, you're really not going to make a lot of money on that option. So strike and premium really kind of work together for you to become a problem as an option buyer. All right. Now, as an option seller, well, the expiration works for us because the closer and closer something comes to expiring, that means we can collect, right? It's kind of like, I want you to think about an insurance policy every three months. I pay my car insurance, right? And I know that this is not happening literally, but you know, I can just see the car insurance people sitting there at their desk saying, all right, we got his $500. And in two more days, he has no more car accidents. We're going to get to keep that 500 bucks and we don't have to provide any services for him. That's when the contract expires. Now, when my contract expires for insurance, I renew it for another $500. And there they are sitting, waiting by the phone. All right, Ron, don't have any accidents. Don't have any, don't have any, uh, you know, any problems because in three months, we're going to get to keep that 500 bucks. So if I was buying insurance for my car and I was only doing it at one week increments, right? Probably wouldn't be very expensive, but the, ex the expiration would be much more in the benefit of the insurance company. They only have one week of risk, right? Now, when you have an option and you're selling it, that strike price is easy to avoid. What did I just tell you about the $50 stock, right? You have a $50 stock, you think it's gonna go up. Well, if I sell a $60 call, that means that I have the ability to make money unless the stock goes over $60 a share. If I think the stock will go down, I might sell a $60 call. That way, if the stock stays at 50, I'm profitable. If the stock rises to 55, I can stay profitable as the trade gets closer to expiration. Now, in the case of option selling, the premium is something that you collect. So when you sell an option, option selling, another way to term this is writing an option. So when you sell an option, it's not like when you sell your car or you sell your house, right? When you sell your car, you sign over the title, you give the title to the buyer, he walks away, he gets insurance on the car, He's going to get new license plates, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And he now assumes all the risk. You've got your money. You've collected it. You've got no more risk on the table. Well, when you sell slash write an option, you have an obligation. It's like an insurance policy. You're telling your buyer that you will perform a certain task. If you sell somebody a call, you are providing them the obligation to buy their stock from them. Okay. So as a seller of a call, I have the obligation to sell stock to somebody if they want it. As a seller of a put, I have the obligation to buy stock. Now, don't let that obligation scare you. I have been selling options for over a decade and I have never had the obligation to perform a stock transaction. It's just not something that happens in a well-managed trade. Not even a well-managed trade. Most trades, even if you screw it up, you're never gonna have to perform a stock transaction. So we are primary traders of options. We will never, own a stock. We will never be short a stock, nothing like that. And again, at premium, you get paid. So the more expensive the premium, the more profits that you can make. All right. That's the how an option works. That's kind of the calls, the puts, the buyers, the sellers, and all that stuff. Now, let me ask you all a question. 
have you been more of a buyer or a seller of options? I'm curious, give me some ideas in the chat. Have you been more of a buyer or a seller in your options trading history? I'm kind of curious. I'll give you a couple minutes to type in some uh, answers there while I sip my coffee. I'm a, uh, I'm a cold brew guy, by the way. I'm not a big fan of Starbucks coffee, but I think they do their cold brew really well. Panera actually does pretty good cold brew too. All right. So ultimately buy it, right? What we've got to do to really get this thing switched around, we have to become an option seller. Now, the key takeaway here is this, being an option seller gives you a high probability of success. You can average between 70 and 90% winning trades, okay? You can do this. It is very, very possible. In fact, let me do something for you guys real quick here. I, this is kind of not part of the presentation, but the cool thing about this is I can do stuff like this. All right, I wanna show you guys something. This is from my tracking software, all right? This is from my tracking software. This is my trade so far this year on the S&P 500. I have placed 28 trades this year on the S&P 500. You can see that I have a 71% win rate. Obviously I'm making money. This is based on a $100,000 account, by the way just so you know. So I'm up about 15%. I'm actually have to put a, a winning trade in here now that I put the loser in there. I had last week. So I've got a 15% return for the year and I have a 71% win rate overall. And again, these are the actual trades that I do with my clients. So I'm not like trying to be cute or anything. So that's what being a good option seller can give you. Now to do this, to be a good option seller, all right? We call this, you need to avoid strikes. What does that mean? You need to avoid strikes. It's kind of interesting. I have bowling league tonight and my whole bowling league tonight, I don't want to miss any strikes. I want to throw as many strikes as I can. But when it comes to options trading, I want to basically avoid it. I want to keep things in the gutter, if you will. So to kind of understand this, let's talk a little bit about option buyers mistakes. People that primarily buy an option, let's talk about some of the mistakes that they make. Well, they make mistakes by choosing an unrealistic strike. Now, what does that typically mean, right? I love this illustration here. It's like when you have a 30 acre field of way overgrown grass and the guy's trying to put, use a push mower to get it done. You don't need a push mower. You need like a brush hog at this point. It's just not gonna work. You're using the wrong tool. Now, what happens is an option buyer will choose a strike that is so far away, the stock has very, very little chance of do, hitting it. Now, why do they do it? They do it for one primary reason. They do it because it's inexpensive, okay? They're treating options like the lottery, right? Now, the lottery is fun to play. I think the Mega Millions is like $480 million. I'm not gonna lie, I threw 10 bucks at it, right? Somebody's gonna win it, might as well be me. There's nothing wrong with doing that, right? But when it comes to creating income, it's not the best approach. I always joke with my wife, let's take our 8% IRA money and we'll put it into the lottery, right? No, you don't do something like that. It's not how you create income. You create income by high percentage actions. So let me put this on a graph, all right? So here's up to Lockheed Martin, but it doesn't matter what stock it is. Times is people will go out there on a $216 stock and they'll buy a call like way up here at 230 bucks. Why? Because it's inexpensive. If I buy an option near where the current stock price is, that might cost me a thousand bucks. But if I buy one up here, it might only cost me 70 bucks. Well, the problem is it's not really going to make any So what that creates is a lot of losing trades where you're losing 75 bucks at a time. Your account is drying up and dying, you know, the, the death by a thousand paper cuts. Now it also works on the flip side. 
people buy puts, right? People buy way below the market. They think the stock will go down. Put. do is use that mistake that option buyers make because the stock is probably not going to hit that price we're actually going to sell options there so instead of buying a call up here at 230 we're going to sell a call at 230. what that does is i think that the stock is going to go down that 230 dollar will eventually spider and or if it goes, you know, sideways. As long as it stays above 200, if I'm bullish, or below 230, if I'm bearish, that allows me to make money, all right? Now, I want you to put this again back into your, you know, have you ever cheap option hoping And I had thought a stock was going to go up. So I bought calls on Mike. Well, the problem was, you know, I guess I can kind of probably show this. The problem that I had was this. I thought this was going to go up, but I'm just using IBM as an example. I thought this was going to go up to, let's say, right here, right? So what I did is I went out there and bought a call, like, right in this area that expired, you know, right about here. Well, guess what? The stock actually did go up there. My my uh, prediction was valid. But because I bought a call that was so far away from the current price, I didn't actually make any money. It got close to expiration. Any value it had dried up, and I lost money on the trade. That was my very first options trade. And I remember that. I remember that. And then a couple of comments that came in there. It's easier to be a buyer. It is easier to be a buyer. There's no question. You just buy something and hope it goes up. Absolutely. So, yeah, it does, it's definitely easier to be a buyer. But it's not going to be the most profitable thing. So we've got to work on it from that nature. Now, what we want to do is be the seller of an option that has a very little getting hit all right what that means again is if i think we'll go up i choose a price underneath it here where it's up i can make money if it goes up i can make money sideways and make it even if it comes down and stays above that price that i picked it gives me a fish and be successful and i think that the market will go down down. I say the market can do this on indexes too. If I think that the stock is going to go down, what I would typically do is I would have gone up here. Okay. And now if the stock goes down, I make money. If it goes sideways, I make money. If it goes up, I make money. Okay. So that's what I can do. All right. And then uh, here you go. Is this live or is this recording? Nope. This is 100% live. 100% live. Here, I'll even show you guys. Where's my, uh... there you go, <laughs> 1231 Eastern time. You see, that's my wife's hair on my phone. So no, very, very much live. All right, good deal. Okay, so be the option seller. Now, one thing I also want to do while you guys are watching this, if you go to www.vectorvest.com slash FB1, go there download your free action guide. That's going to get you started understanding some of these concepts. Now, remember, stick around towards the end. We're going to give away a $1,000 option class to one of you that are in the class right now. So keep that in mind. All right. Now, the options paycheck system, this is actually the guide that you can download. Go to vectorvest.com slash FB1, click on download now. And what that'll do is it'll let you download. Now, another thing that you can do, um, send out that checklist. You'll get it by email. Put your name, uh, last name in there, an email address, get your checklist. And then also, 
Um, what we're doing is you can kind of see the dates right here, Wednesday, July 20th, Wednesday, July 20th at 6, Thursday, July 21st at 4.30. We are going to have a live class that kind of teaches more in depth the basics of what we do. So when you go to vectorvest.com slash FB1, also register for one of our classes upcoming next week where we will talk a little bit more about that. And again, you can kind of see the how to generate 3% per month. That is my goal. When I run my classes with my students, I'm, my goal is to make 3% per month on average. And over the last seven years, we've done that. All right. Now, let's talk a little bit more about option selling. We talked about strike prices that weren't all that great. Now, let's talk about expiration. And I always say the expiration sweet spot. It's kind of like golf. I love playing golf. And when you hit a golf ball, there is a certain part of the club that you want to hit it on. Like this happens to be a driver. You want to make sure you're hitting the ball as close to the center as you can. That gives it the maximum MOI. Okay. With an iron, it's the same thing. You want to hit it close to the center, a little bit low on the club face, but close to the center. Because when you do that, it's the most optimal for the most performance. But we want to do the same thing with expiration. So one of the biggest mistakes that option buyers make is they choose expirations. They choose options that simply expire too soon. And a good analogy of this is when you go shopping, maybe you want to get a steak for later, right? You go to the store, you see all of the steaks, whether you like ribeye, filet, what have you, it doesn't make a difference, right? You go buy a ribeye. They've got two of them next to each other. One is $600 a pound. Hey, inflation, right? I'm just kidding. Let's say one is $25 a pound and it expires a week from now. But then there's one next to it that's $10 a pound. But you notice that the expiration is tomorrow. Well, if you're going to eat that steak today or tomorrow, get the cheap one. It's close to expiring. It has very little value because they're going to have to throw it away if it doesn't get sold. You buy the one that expires now. But if you're preparing for dinner on Sunday night, you can't buy that one or it'll be rotten by the time Sunday comes around. Options are the same thing. What happens to an option is option has something called time decay. If you really want to know the technical name for it, it's called theta. What happens with an option's time decay or theta is that the decay of the option premium goes faster and faster and faster as it gets closer and closer to expiration. So what this graph is showing you is it's showing you in the upper left. And let me turn off my camera for a second so you guys can actually kind of see or actually, let me just do it this way. Over on the left-hand side, you have 180 days to expiration. So think of that as a six-month option, right? This is the value of time in that option. And you can see that it gradually, gradually, gradually drops till this magic moment of about right here. And then all of a sudden for there, it just drops like a rock, right? That option essentially has lost 50% of its value in the last 45 days to expiration. If you sell an option at 180 days, that thing is not going to lose very much of its time value. But if you sell an option into a 21 to 45 expiration day window, you are selling that option when time decay is at its highest level. Now, why is that important for us? Well, remember I told you that you can make money on an option sell, even if you're wrong on direction. Well, you're going to primarily make money when you sell an option on direction. So if I think a stock is going to go down, I sell a call, right? If I think a stock is going to go down, I would sell a call. Now, what happens if you sell a call and the stock goes sideways or actually rises? You're not going to make money based on direction you're gonna make money based on the time decay of that option. So time decay is your you know, ace in the hole, so to speak. If you're wrong on direction, time decay is what's gonna pay you money. And you don't wanna be up here where time decay is really at a trickle. You want it to be in that exponential decline. Now, if that's the case, well, Ron, why wouldn't we sell an option even closer to expiration? We wouldn't sell the option closer to expiration for one major reason. It's too cheap. Now you're not getting any premium for it. Okay. So we want to sell it when there's still a good premium. And then 
We don't want to sell it too close to expiration where the options are so cheap, you're not going to make any money. All right. So we want to get in that 21 to 45 day window. You know, and again, you know, I'll ask a kind of a hypothetical question. You can answer it in the chat if you want to. I'd appreciate it if you would. But if not, it's okay. But think to think of yourself. Have you ever bought an option only to watch it expire worthless? Have you bought an option that, let's say, is very close to expiration? You thought the stock was going to move in your direction, and then all of a sudden, it just expired, and you ended up making no money. That is a very common flaw of new option traders. And again, they do this because options, as you get closer to expiration, are cheaper. So... People look at big stocks like a Tesla and Amazon. They say, oh my gosh, I can buy this option that expires Friday and I only pay 50 bucks for it. Well, the reason why it's so cheap and the reason why it's $50 is because the chance of you actually making money on that are very, very remote. That's why they can make that thing so cheap. It just doesn't have any value. Okay. All right. So let's kind of transition a little bit here. So our options decay quicker as they get closer to the expiration date. So what we want to do is we want to sell options that expire in about a 21 to 45 day window. All right. Now, again, I want to throw this out there. Stick around to the end. You're going to have a chance to win a thousand dollar options income course. That way you can kind of learn all of the nuances, the secrets, the secret sauce of doing this to where you can get to a place where you are hopefully in that 70 percent percentile. Now, one of the things that can make being an option seller very, very risky. Now, I'm not talking risk about, you know, the trade not working for you. I'm talking dollar risk. Have you ever heard that being an option seller can create huge losses? Now, one of the biggest fears that I get from new options traders are simply this. Ron, I've heard about doing this before and... What I know is that if I, you know, do this wrong, I can have one bad trade wipe out all of my winners. Well, that's really easy to prevent. How do you prevent it? Well, let me give you an analogy here. I know that jumping off my roof at home will probably break my legs. You know how I prevent that? I just don't do it. I don't jump off the roof. If you put yourself into a position in an options trade where you can lose seven or eight trades, that's on you. You would never take a trade where that could happen. Okay. Now think about it. I showed you earlier some of my results. 70% on my income trades. My average winner is about $1,400 and my average loser is about $1,600. Okay. None of my trades wiped out seven, eight, nine winners. So on those 29% of the trades that I took that were losers, None of them overtook five, six, seven winners. You just don't take trades like that and it won't happen. So how do you do it? We set up what we call an insurance policy. So let me kind of walk you through this idea here. So the paycheck system that we present reduces the risk in your trade. Before we even open the trade, we know the risk. Now, first off, we're going to sell options on very good stocks. I'm not going to use all the, you know, the picks of the week, things like that. $3, $4 stocks generally. I'm going to use good, I hate to say it, but blue chip type companies, right? Companies have been around for a while. They've got good earnings performance, good stocks. And again, I can do this bullish or I can do this bearish. It doesn't matter on direction. So once we have a good stock that we like, something like this, right? We think it might go up. Instead of being what we call a naked option seller, we sell with protection. What that means is this. If you sell just a put on this stock, you are essentially leaving yourself open for a massive loss. Because what happens if the stock all of a sudden goes from 137 to 110? You now have the obligation to buy the stock at 130 or 132.50 and the stock's trading at 110. You just took a massive loss. What you have to do, however, is shrink that loss down. Now the options paycheck system shrinks your risk just to that small amount. That's it, all right? The way that we do it is like this. When you have a stock that you think will go up, OK, we're not going to buy it. We're not going to buy a call. We are going to be a seller. We're going to sell a put underneath the price of the stock, because what that allows me to do is make money. The stock's 
I can make money if it goes up sideways or down to 135. And if it goes lower than 135, I'll take a small proportional loss. Okay. So if you sell a put down there, you're going to get paid a premium. So for example, let's say that you get paid $200 on this particular option. All right. Now, if you traded 10 contracts of this, you would get paid $2,000. Now that sounds great, right? But again, you have no downside protection. So if the stock all of a sudden, because of who knows what, right, opens up $20 lower, you're going to suffer a catastrophic loss. We don't want to do that. We want to have a built-in protection program. So what you're going to do is while you sell a put, you're going to simultaneously buy a put as well. So we pick a price a little bit further down and we also buy a put. Now, the internals of what this does is I want you to think about it this way. When you buy buy a put it gives you the right to sell a stock when you sell a put it may come with the obligation to buy a stock so i want you to think about it this way let's say you perform this trade all of a sudden the stock goes down to 100 dollars a share you are now obligated based on the option that you sold to buy the stock for 135 bucks that's kind of a bummer right because now the stock's trading at 100 but you also bought a put at 130. You can take that $100 stock and now sell it to that 130 option seller. You have the right to now sell the stock for 130 bucks based on the put that you bought. You've essentially reduced your risk in this trade down to $5 a share. Now that insurance does cost something. You're gonna have to pay example this time, $100 per contract. So after this transaction is done, you're still gonna get paid $100 to place this trade. If you did it on 10 contracts, that's a thousand bucks. All right. That's how much you can make on this trade as long as the stock stays above 135. All right. So if the stock goes up, you can still make money. If the stock goes sideways, you can still make money. If the stock goes down, you can still make money. That is the beauty about what happens to a trade like this. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to show you guys an, a live trade that I did this week. And I think it's up a little bit right now, but I'm not 100% sure. Let me go check the graph here. Oh, it looks like it's uh, down a little bit, but that's okay. Not very much. All right. So I did a trade. Give me one second. I'm going to put it on your screen here in just a minute. All right. So I did a trade early this week on Roku. My bet is that Roku is gonna come somewhere down to this low. That's what I'm kind of betting on Roku to do. So what I did is I went out there and I sold a $100 call, all right? If the stock goes down to where I think it's gonna go, I can make money. If the stock goes up to $100 a share, I will exit the trade and take a loss. It's up about 30 cents today. I think the market turned around a little bit from where we were this morning. Yeah, the S&P is actually only down five points. It was down like 60 this morning. I guess the inflation, they're shaking that off. So this is the actual trade that I did. I sold a $100 call and I simultaneously bought a 105. Now in this trade, I, per contract, I can make up to $135. I don't expect you to understand this risk perfectly. But in this trade, I can make $135 as long as my stock and let me just kind of rip this around as long as the stock stays below hundred dollars i can make money so if you see over here on this graph this is my profit and loss graph see all this green if it stays in the green i can make money if it goes back to here to hundred dollars a share i'm going to lose but how much will i lose on this trade i'm going to lose about 66 dollars if this trade goes against me per contract I have the potential to make up to $135 if the trade works for me with a risk of only $60. That's the kind of trade that I like to perform. Okay, that's an example. And by using that built-in protection plan, that's what happens. That call, or in this case, that call that I bought offers me a hedge. So if the stock goes against me, that call I bought starts making money and it offsets the loss. Also, in a massive catastrophic rise in Roku, it gives me that maximum built-in protection. So for instance, if I did that trade, and I'll show you the graph one more time, 
the absolute worst I can lose is $365 a contract. Now, mind you, I have never lost a maximum loss in my trade ever because the stock would have to rise tremendously. Now, I want you to look at the difference here. Let's say I sold the trade naked and I just sold a $100 call. Go. I want you to look over on the right-hand side. See where this maximum risk button is or this maximum risk column is? If I don't buy insurance, watch what happens. What's my maximum risk? Infinite. If this stock all of a sudden jumped to $120 a share, yes, I can make $645, but I have the potential to lose, you know, $1,500. And if it just keeps going up, I'm going to lose more and more and more and more. So that idea, now I don't expect you to understand everything you're seeing. I'm just trying to lay a ground foundation for the way that we do this. Again, if it's something that you're interested in, get to that free action guide, go to vectorvest.com slash FB1, and we can go ahead and get you kind of signed up for not only the action guide, what you will see at that website, all right? You can also, once you click download now, give us your email and address and we'll send it out to you, all right? Also, you can sign up in the next next week, starting on Wednesday, July 20th at noon, Wednesday, July 20th at 6, and Thursday, July 21st at 4.30, you can learn a little bit more about this system. And I just realized something. I'm going to miss my bowling night next Wednesday. My league starts at like 6.30, and I have a class at 6 o'clock. My wife will be so disappointed. My wife hates bowling. But I chose it as a uh, compromise. I told her, hey, we're going to join a bowling league or we're going to join a golf league. She hates both of those equally. So she, I got to pick the summer activity. She gets to pick the winter activity. So I'd like to, I'm kind of curious to see what she's going to choose for us in the, in the winter to have an activity together. All right. So the last thing I want to talk about, the fifth key principle here is you need to take less because it's more. You ever hear the expression that half a loaf is better than none? It, it really is the same thing when it comes to options, okay? When you trade with emotion, it can hurt your trading results. Now, what does emotions really mean? Well, emotion typically is that fear of greed or that fear in that greed cycle. Well, I don't want to have a losing trade, so I'm going to hold on to this in the hopes that it goes back against me. Or, yes, I know I made $3,000 in this trade, but I want to make 5000 that's emotional trading. You need to be in a trade like a robot. You know, when I was first learning how to trade, my primary teachers called trading mechanical. You have to be a trader using a mechanical methodology. That means everything needs to be a rule. If it does this, you do this. If it does this, you do that. So what I'm saying here is this. When you enter a trade, you want to take profits not at 100%. So let me put this back into perspective. This was that trade on Roku, right? If I did that trade on Roku, which again, I actually did. Oops, that's DocuSign. DocuSign actually made money on this morning. I'm out of that trade. But Roku, if I look at Roku, now the most I can make is $135. I'm not going to try to make $135. I'm going to make $67 in this trade. Why? Because that's half of what I've taken in. Now, why would I only want to take in 50% of the profit? Here's why. Let's say that this is where I get profits. So if the stock falls to somewhere around $75, I get to make money on Roku. But you see how that dashed line continues higher and higher and higher? The stock only has to move about you know, 11 or 12 bucks for me to make my 50% profit. In order to make 100%, the stock has to fall to 45. The chance of that happening gets farther and farther and farther away, lower and lower probability. So I take my profits quick, smaller moves. Now, you can look at that and say, well, Ron, now you're only making $67 before. Well, guess what? My risk on the trade is still only about $67. I can make 67, I lose 62, 63. That's it. I have a trade that is 70% probable, but when I win, I can make 67. When I lose, I can only lose 60. Now, I know what you guys might say, Ron, what if the stock gaps? Well, if the stock gaps and it happens once or twice a year, I might lose a little bit more. 
But in the grand scheme of things, I am protected against that. Because again, I only take trades that have very, very good risk and reward. That's a very key part of being an option seller. All right. That's your fifth key principle. Now, again, I have an action guide that includes a checklist that's the perfect companion to what you learn. This action guide will walk you through all of the basic concepts. Okay. You can download it today, but you got to go to vectorvest.com slash FB1. Okay. Download that FB1. That'll take you to this site right there. In fact, here's what I'm going to do. I'll actually go to that site with you, vectorvest.com slash FB1. And this is what that site looks like right here. There's my five list, five step cheat. Click on download now right there. Put your name in and all that stuff. John Doe. John Doe. At jdoe.com. Okay. I want my checklist. You're going to get an email with that checklist. Well, whoever John Doe is at doe.com will get, will get it. But they'll send you an email for that checklist. Now, while you wait, claim your spot in one of our upcoming classes, July 20th at noon, July 20th at 6, or July 21st at 4.30. Click on claim my spot now, and then sign up for one of those classes. And what we're going to do is we're going to go a little more in depth and how being a good option seller can work for you. Okay. Now, here's what I want to do. I finish out today. If you have any questions, please let me know. That's the step number one. But the second thing that I want to do is I want to raffle off a spot in our next paycheck class. So do me a favor, type the word paycheck, no quotes, just type the word paycheck into the chat. I'm going to give you about 60 seconds to do this. And then we're going to do a drawing for, again, a free spot in our next class. All right. So I'm going to give you about 60 seconds or so. Get that in there. Just type in paycheck. That's all you got to do. And then we will draw a name. All right. Where is my drawing thing? I got to find it too. Oh, here it is. Okay. All right. I'll give you about 60 seconds or so, and you can type that in there. Give you about 30 more seconds. I want to make sure everybody's got the opportunity. And all right, so here we go. And we'll go ahead and draw. All right, Marie Fingley, you are our winner for a giveaway for the options course. So congratulations. It's good to have you with us, but you are our winner. So awesome. Um, John, I know you could probably reach out to her with all the information she'll need to use, and then uh, we can kind of get back to her and we can kind of set you up. So cool. That worked out pretty well. This is the first time I've ever used this kind of random uh, StreamYard giveaway tool. It's kind of cool. I love the software. It's really great, actually. All right. So good deal. Welcome. And Maria, you're going to love it. I know it. I've been doing this for a long time, teaching option selling. I know you're going to love it. So welcome aboard. And John will be in touch with you to get all of your person's information to get you signed up properly. All right. Here's what I want to do. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up for today. Again, I can't stress this enough. Get out there. Go to vectorvest.com. All right. Slash FB1. Get that five-step worksheet get that downloaded and sign up for one of our introductory option selling presentations next week, whether it's Wednesday or Thursday, get yourself signed up. This is something that can really add income and a lot of confidence and a lot of profits to your trading. And again, I kind of showed you earlier, I always like to, you know, I don't like to be a, a guru, right? That's why I always like to share my actual trading. 
that's why I put this up there. These are my SPX positions this year, for instance. This is one of my core things I do. 28 trades. So we're not trading 55 times a week. I've traded 28 trades this year. That's it. It's already July. I've traded 28 trades. We're up about 15%. So I'm a little bit, uh, I mean, it's, it's July 13th. So I'm pretty much on pace of my 3%. But my, mind you, that is just the S&P. If I went back to the rest of my trading, you can kind of see that I'm actually up more than that for the year. I'm up about 19%. So I have, uh, you know, I'm hitting my goals. Let's put it that way. All right. All right. With that, I will let you guys go. Have a good rest of your day, everybody. It was a pleasure speaking with you. And from then, I will see all of you hopefully next week. All right. Thanks again, everybody. And have a good one.